Hello, Colleen here. I just got a new tripod, which I'm testing out. And I can't see what you see right now. So we'll go with it and um, I'll look at it on the playback, but I wanted to talk about eating well from your pantry. Um, I grew up in Southern California and I think we were always pretty prepared for what might happen from an earthquake, uh, which didn't amount to much. Maybe you need a couple days of food and water, um, which really never happened. Um, I can't think of a time in my personal experience where earthquake meant that we had no food or water for days, but there were areas, maybe not even far from us, me, wherever I happened to be at the time, where, you know, like, Northridge earthquake, for instance, um, there were people who went without water and stuff, but it never really happened where I was. And then I moved to Florida and um, hurricane preparedness is a thing every year. They actually did go through Hurricane Irma and went, I think, seven days at my house with no power. Um, I think there was no interruption to the water, but after two or three days, I moved into a, a hotel that had a little kitchen, mostly because I couldn't stand 100 degrees and 100% humidity without any air conditioning because the power was down for a week. So I lived in a hotel for a lot of that time. However, I was working on a rental property, um, which also had no power, and suffered some minor damage from wind and whatever. But anyway, um, I was working all day um, in the heat and humidity and there was no escape to any air-conditioned place until I went back to my hotel so that's how that went but um, now I live in Mexico and I can buy groceries here very basic groceries and occasionally I can get some imported good stuff American gringo food um, but it's quite expensive generally um, and we don't have the selection of food here that I'm used to from the United States so although the produce is fabulous I have to say um, but I recently, for the first time in my life, to be honest, wrote down meal ideas. Basically, a, li a brief list, you know, more or less, foods that I like. And um, I'd like to share it with you because it's sort of a 
starting point of what I've been doing for the last probably two months. Okay, so my meal ideas. Salads. Greek salad. I love Greek salad. Um, Asian, which would be like a Chinese chicken salad or, or some such. Caesar, usually with chicken. Spinach and bacon. That's the one with the hot dressing that kind of wilts the spinach. Blue cheese and balsamic, which is more a dressing concept than the salad itself. Taco salad of any kind. Panzanella. Antipasto. Seafood. Um, which in my thinking is a green salad with some kind of a seafood topping. Um, potato salad with egg. Um, I live alone and potato salad with egg is a complete meal. Um, I used to, I used to make this kind of often for my family and I was the only one who liked it, but like I could live on it. So I've included it there. Um, soups. El Bondigas, which is a Mexican um, meatball soup. Tom Yum, which is Thai food. Ramen, which has a lot of different variations. And I promise you I will like do some videos on all the ways you can make ramen fabulous because it's one of my favorite things. Miso. Japanese miso, tomato, clam chowder, which I've had a hankering for lately. I bought a can of clam chowder. I'm not a big fan of canned soup, but I'm going to try that. I also started buying cans of clams to make my own, um, which is not something I've done. But anyway, broccoli and cheese split pea, beef and barley, black bean, lentil, chicken, and whatever, you know, rice, noodle, whatever. Okay, Mexican foods. Uh, this is very brief because it's really just to jog my memory, so I say tacos. There are Mexican-style tacos, which are generally like a soft corn tortilla shell. And then there's American style tacos, which are a crispy shell, usually with ground beef, which Mexicans never eat, um, blah, blah, blah. I like, I like them all. There's no, there is no taco that I don't like. A taco is anything you throw together inside a, a corn tortilla however you want to however you want to do it so tacos I could almost live just on that burritos similar story tostada which is um, a corn tortilla you fry hard flat usually topped with refried beans and anything else you want to put on it Tamale, enchilada, chili relleno, chili verde, um, which is basically pork, tomatillos, and green chilies. A lot of variation on that one as well. Refried beans. Spanish rice, chorizo or machaca, and eggs. Um, 
looking at this right now, it's like I should have included Huevos Rancheros. Um, I should have written that down, but there's no way I'm going to forget Huevos Rancheros. That's one of the things that I really like. Um, <coughs> there's also, you know, Chilequiles and a hundred other things, but these were just me trying to put ideas to paper, which, like I said, is new for me. Okay? Sandwiches. Hamburger, BLT, tuna salad, ham and cheese, or any kind of lunch meat and cheese, grilled cheese, hot dog, however many ways you want to make a hot dog, pulled pork, which I like with coleslaw on a soft hamburger bun. Um, a chicken patty, by which I mean something like you would get at Chick-fil-A with kind of a usually pretty processed chicken patty and mayonnaise and pickles. Peanut butter, with or without jelly and so on. Hoagie, which would be like a submarine sandwich or anything that comes on a large soft roll. I tried to make that on my homemade sourdough, which didn't really work. Because the bread was, that particular loaf was too crispy. It was very hard to chew. Um, egg McMuffin or similar breakfast type sandwich. Uh, New Orleans. Red beans and rice. Something I really love. Jambalaya. Or barbecue shrimp, which is not technically barbecued at all. But it's a thing. It's really good. I like it. Asian, etc. This kind of turned out to be one of my longer lists. Um, Penang, which is a red Thai curry. Yellow curry, which is always made with chicken for some reason. Tikka masala. Stir fry. Spring rolls. Chow mein. Mint leaf chicken, garlic pepper beef, beef and broccoli, chicken lettuce wraps, beef bowl, as in Yoshinoya beef bowl, drunken noodles, again Thai food, <coughs> satay, fried rice. I love fried rice. I actually make it often. Usually, anytime I do make it, that's what I eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner until it's gone. I don't know why I don't make it just, you know, every day and live on it, but um, I kind of never get tired of it. Uh, shrimp sushi bowl. This is something I've never actually made, but um, steamed rice. Kikoman soy sauce, some wasabi, and shrimp. You don't need to actually make sushi. Well, oh, pickled ginger. You don't actually need to make sushi, sushi rolls, but if you had all those elements in a bowl, it absolutely tastes like my favorite kind of sushi so um and then teriyaki which i listed just generally um i love all kinds of teriyaki but i buy the kikoman teriyaki sauce in quantity i have a lot of it um 
but you can use teriyaki sauce kind of as a salad dressing or to flavor your chicken and rice or you know whatever and hang on a second This is the item. Come on, teriyaki. Uh, I bought this one in Mexico, which means it makes me crazy, and it means I paid a lot of money for it because it's imported. Uh, made in USA. Imported from USA. Um, ingredients, soy sauce, uh, yeah, can't do it because it's all in Spanish, but I have several more bottles of this stashed away with, um, the American labels because it costs half as much to buy it in USA. So, sorry about that. Okay, pasta. Spaghetti. Or any shape noodle with a red sauce is what I mean by that. Lasagna. Beef stroganoff. Chicken divan. Which, if you make it a homemade, it's actually very good. Um, it's sold in a can and it's pretty nasty, but um, it's just a casserole, um, a pretty good casserole. Macaroni and cheese with whatever variations. Pierogies, which are a Polish dumpling. Ravioli, Italian dumpling. Alfredo, anything with Alfredo sauce. Pesto, anything with pesto sauce. Garlic and olive oil, anything with that as a topping for your pasta. Pasta salad, which is anything where the pasta is served cold. Chicken marsala, I should underline that one because I don't have any marsala wine. And that's really all you need to turn whatever you have into into chicken marsala well pin not working okay Middle Eastern food falafel kibbe hummus shawarma tabule spanakopita tahini sauce garlic sauce uh, Tex-Mex, fajitas, you know, that's, I like fajitas, but it's not Mexican food. Chili with beans, I love, not Mexican food. Goulash, um, is not something I've eaten in the last three years, but I find it kind of interesting. Um, I just recently bought a pound of elbow macaroni so that I could make some goulash because it's similar but a little bit different. Uh, nachos of any kind and anything Southwest. Southwest salad, Southwest soup, Southwest dish. Um, I think of this generally as being maybe some corn chips, chicken, corn, and black beans, and whatever. Southwest. Um, okay, and then other. 
Polish sausage, I found this incredible sausage in Mexico. Hang on. So this translates to Polish sausage, apparently, according to my, according to my phone. Um, but it definitely has like clove or cinnamon or something in it, in addition to normal Polish sausage spices. And I like it better than the Polish sausage my Polish mother fed me as a child. So anyway, love that stuff. I have three pounds of it in the freezer. Um, stuffed cabbage, which is a lot of trouble to make, but I have found that if I make it using all the ingredients, I can like chop up the cabbage and like throw in the hamburger and the rice and blah, 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 and not go through the hard part of actually rolling the cabbage, actually stuffing the cabbage. I can just put all the ingredients in a pot and make a mush out of it. And it works um, with a lot less trouble. Pizza, which I make all the time from scratch. Um, often I make a sourdough pizza because When you keep a sourdough starter, as I do, you have to do something with it about once a week or throw it out, throw half of it out once a week. And so I end up making quite a bit of sourdough pizza. Um, and I make pizza every which way. I make it with mozzarella cheese and a tomato sauce you know, typical pizza pizza. I make it with barbecue sauce and chicken. I make it with any kind of sauce, any kind of meat, any kind of cheese, you know, to use up the sourdough starter. They're all good. Um, poultry and stuffing. Now this is something, um, I just went shopping a big, shopping trip to the San Diego area after making this list of the kind of, you know, food ideas, meal ideas. So at Grocery Outlet, I got this 12 ounces of stuffing for 47 cents. I bought two. in the same store. I bought this for 99 cents. This has a lot of creepy ingredients in it. This has, um, this is half as much stuffing. This doesn't have anything creepy in it. I on my last trip, bought this beautiful covered pan. And this is um, a stuffing that I made. And it has, it completely filled this big pan. I think I was, um, having a hard time keeping everything in the pan, you know, to, to stir it. But in that pan, I put this 47 cent stuffing mix. Um, three chicken thighs, one green apple chopped up, 
about a cup of raisins. I don't know. I didn't measure it. <coughs> Again, unmeasured. Onion and celery. I used about a half of a packet of the chicken bouillon from a ramen packet which um, this, there's a spice pack in here, but it contains no salt. So, and the end product actually needed more salt. I probably could have used like a whole packet um, from the chicken ramen um, or chicken bouillon otherwise. Anyway. Um, delicious. I ate this until I almost popped. I ate this and I was like, how many ways can I change this up with sauces out of the refrigerator? Well, um, the thing I found that actually made it taste best, best of all, was just to add some soy sauce because it lacks salt. Um, a Chinese style soy sauce. Um, okay, back to where I was, right? Bouldering and stuffing. Ham and scalloped potatoes. Corned beef. Corned beef any way you want to make it, you know. Um, oatmeal. I like oatmeal. Old fashioned oats. I usually make them in the microwave. I can make them on the stove. I like oatmeal cookies, which I usually f make a batch of and then freeze, and I'll eat that for breakfast, an oatmeal cookie or two for breakfast. Um, quiche. So those are my you know, general meal ideas, and that's just a starting point, and there's like a lot of, you know, ways to alternate, uh, make these things like a, a little bit different or a lot different. Um, I did go after making this list to San Diego area, which was a 10 hour day to drive there, get across the border, go to Dollar Tree grocery outlet and a small warm Walmart buy stuff and get back across the border on a Friday which usually only takes a long time to get there it's usually quick to get back it was long both directions that day um, but that was where I bought this this stuffing mix and this stuffing mix. Um, one of the things I bought at Grocery Outlet that I'm very thrilled with is three of these, which I freeze. Feta cheese freezes beautifully. And when you thaw it, it crumbles just the way feta cheese should. Um, and this is a key item for the Greek salad. So I have four of these eight ounce packages now in my freezer. And I have four little jars of Kalamata olives. And I have two big jars of um, yellow pepper rings. And of course I have canned chicken. So Greek salad in the prepper pantry because it's one of my favorite things. Of course I have, um, I just bought Dijon mustard and red wine vinegar and I have olive oil and I have oregano like to make a salad dressing you get where I'm going here? Um, 
prepper pantry food doesn't have to be, you know, bland and mushy. It can be. See, an awful, I mean, I've looked at an awful lot of videos saying that. What can I make with prepper pantry food? And I see a whole lot of mushy, yucky stuff I don't want to eat. Um, it doesn't have to be that way. Um, this is an item I never bought before. But this um, six ounces Tony Chacharoni's, however you say it, Creole seasoning. There's nothing magic about this. Um, except it's really good. Uh, ingredients, salt, red pepper, which is cayenne, black pepper, chili powder, which says it is made up of chili pepper, spices, salt, garlic powder, dehydrated garlic, silicon dioxide, anti-caking agent. Um, but it's actually really good. I, I have started like testing it out, playing around with putting it on a lot of different things. I, I mean, I got it at Dollar Tree. Um, I think it's not actually that much of a bargain. You can buy a much larger container at Walmart and get a similar or better price. But um, I would have never bought this. I'd just be like, Creole seasoning, there is no such thing. <laughs> That's a fact. There is no such thing. Um, but it's good. It's an easy way to make things tasty. So those are the only items that I pulled out you know, like from my recent shopping trip. Um, but living in Mexico, I mean, I can buy groceries here. I can buy groceries here cheaper than I can buy them in San Diego. But I can't get quote unquote imported food cheaper or as cheap or anywhere near as cheap. Um, this little thing probably cost me $4, uh, in Mexico, and I think at Walmart I can buy the, this is, um, 296 milliliter, whatever that means. Um, I could buy a much larger jar of this in San Diego for, you know, less money. Um... This is absolutely not available, although I have found that Mexican cotilla cheese, which is cheaper than this, is not a bad substitute, but it isn't exactly feta. Um, I did buy a larger box, more like, more like this size, of Mrs. Cubison's dressing in Mexico around Christmas. I don't think it was Thanksgiving. I think it was around Christmas. And I think I paid $5 for like this much cubed up bread. Um, so I do these trips and um, it takes a whole day to do the trip and it takes at least uh, one more day, possibly two, to get it all upstairs and put away somewhere. Um, I mean, all of that happened, let me see here, I have a date right now. February 3rd was when I did my shopping trip. Um, it just takes days, days and days to figure out, you know, how to get it upstairs, how to put it away, blah, blah, blah. So um, I probably will do a video where I talk about what I bought in San Diego, mostly as 
I, I suppose I should call this part one and I should call that part two because mostly I was looking for the items that I could um, keep long term that would help me make many of these meals as opposed to, you know, uh, canned mush. Anyway, um, that's what I'm doing. I'm, I have no idea what this looks like. I'll look at it in a minute, but I'm kind of thrilled with the tripod. Much better than the one I had in Florida. <laughs> okay, thanks for watching. Um, like, comment, subscribe. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those. I try very hard to answer all questions. Um, and <coughs> hopefully this will look okay enough that I can figure out how to do a video covering the $700 worth of stuff I bought in San Diego last week. Um, $700. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right. Thanks for watching. Bye.